This is a demo and how-to video on setting up an import template in BlueCell for any uh, text delimited file, which we free refer to as ASCII import. Uh, so you can import any file that has uh, that uses uh, commas or semicolons, which is the European style uh, CSVs, or you can also use tab delimiters. Uh, you only need to set up the uh, what type of delimiter you're using in BlueCell and it'll work for that file. Uh, some common file formats are usually uh, like PNL files from Cabinet Vision or .cut um, or .saw. Uh, really any of those file extensions will work. Um, all of those use commas. So I'm going to go ahead and use a sample uh, PNL file and uh, set that up in BlueCell and show how that would work. So to access the uh, data link, uh, which is what is the actual um, module in BlueCell that is for the import template, you want to come up here to this Import Export tab and click this Configure Data Link. Okay, uh, with Data Link open, I actually have a few things set up already. So just to describe how Data Link works, um, so you can create as many templates as you need, for, depending on what files you want to import into BlueCell. Uh, we have them set up as sequences, which consist of sequence items. So for instance, this one is a cabinet vision sequence, and this one is a, a cut import sequence. And again, these consist of items here. So this one has this parts import item, this one has a uh, ASCII import item. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new one. So I'll do an add. And we can name this anything we want, but uh, typically uh, the safest bet is to name it after the file extension that you want to import. So since we're doing a PNL file extension, I'll just call it PNL import. And now I want to add a sequence item. So I'm going to create a template by going to this Edit Sequence Item Library. So we'll open that. And here we have a, a few set up already, but if you wanted to do a new one, you can click this new ASCII one. So this one I'll delete for now. I'll do new ASCII. So this window will open, which is the Edit ASCII Sequence Item. So you want to give it a name. So again, we'll name it after what it's for, the PNL Im uh, import template. And we'll say what type it is. So if it's a, an import or an export, so it's an import. And here we will give it the file extension. So that will be PNL rather than CSV. And uh, the, since this is for a parts import, uh, I would leave it as parts group. But if you want to do a material import, you can set it to sheets as well. And here is the delimiter. So this is actually a field for Python. Uh, so you can put Python functions. So since it's uh, got, it's used for Python, you actually want to put quotes around it, either double or single, just uh, be make sure to be consistent. So I'm going to say that this is a comma. Now, um, if it was a semicolon, we'll just do a semicolon, like so. And if it was a tab, you want to actually do backslash t, which is uh, Python's way of denoting a tab. So we're going to leave that as a comma. So the starting row would be for if you have a header in your import file that you want the import to ignore. So for instance, if you've got um, a header labeling your material, your length, width, things, and you don't want those to be imported, then you can set your starting row. So a starting row of one would mean you want the entire file to be imported. So it starts at row one and it imports everything below it. And if you wanted to switch that so that you skip the first row, which is your header, uh, then you can switch it to row two, and then that would only import from starting from row two and down. So that would skip row one. And this is the condition. Uh, so this is useful if you want to only import certain parts based on some condition, like uh, only parts that uh, for a certain material. You don't want to import the entire file. You only want to import parts that have um, a material of plywood, for instance. Uh, you could do that. 
Um, you can also combine conditions, so uh, if you want to do parts of a certain material or a certain size or a certain quantity or you know any parameter that you want. Um, I can go into a little more detail later on. And here is a, an output, so this is for if you're exporting. Uh, since we have an import, or excuse me, we have an item type of either import or export, you can set the output name. And here for the starting path, uh, this is basically where you set up where what folder all your import files are going to be. So I'm going to set it to um, a folder where I already have a sample uh, import file. We'll set it there. And the preview source is where my actual uh, template or my, uh, my test file is. So it's actually the same location. And you'll note here that it's actually set to look for PNL files because I told it it is a PNL file extension. So this automatically looks for PNL files inside this test folder. And here I have an uh, R70 PNL file. So now that I have all of these set up, I can go ahead and start mapping my fields. So here under my material, um, I just need to uh, click this edit button and this mapping assistant window opens. And here you'll see uh, this map column, uh, source column, and preview. So the preview um, is actually uh, every the, the first row of all uh, that in the import file. So if I actually open up the uh, r70.pnl file that I'm setting as my uh, source, and I open it with Excel. So if we do that, and we'll let Excel uh, delimit this for us. We'll say it's actually a comma. Here, Excel does this for us. So here, this is the first row. And I can see the A, B, C, D, uh, you know, all the way through I. So this basically uh, matches up with the import, uh, the preview here. Uh, it goes all the way up to, actually, it actually goes up to H rather than I. So here. So now this is for a material. So here I can see um, with this preview which one should be the material. So um, if I actually wanted to see more, um, like I wanted to see the entire column, I could click this plus sign and see everything below. And again, that will match up with the Excel one. So this is column H. So we see everything in column H. So um, if I, I've decided that I want to assign uh, material to this H column, I only need to check it, hit OK, and it updates that to the formula. And I can do the same for the length and the width and the quantity and all the necessary fields I want to map it to. So for length, again, I need to see which one is my length one. So I believe this one may actually be the thickness. So we can go ahead and look. Um, it looks like this one could be the length. And again, I can use this to view it. Um, it could also be number four here, this preview that starts with four. Um, so instead, I'm going to actually choose the E column because uh, length, usually you want to put the longest side to the length. So we'll hit OK. And then, well, again, we'll do width. And we'll say it's actually D since we picked E. And for quantity, for quantity, uh, let's look for the next one. Uh, that one could be the quantity. So we'll check that off. Hit OK. And you can continue to uh, map more columns into the blue cell if you choose. So there are plenty of text fields you could use. You can also combine uh, several columns from the import file into one column in the blue cell one. So for instance, um, under name. So for name, if I actually wanted to do, uh, say it's nailer, and I also wanted to put this in the same column, 
I could check both off. And here it does it automatically for you. Uh, the CT10 nailer, and it puts a uh, delimiter there that's a pipe. And you can modify this. Uh, say you wanted um, actually the nailer to come first and then the CT10. So you can do this. And there that switches it. You could also use a, a different delimiter as well. You can use a, a semicolon instead rather than a pipe. It, it's up to you. This is uh, very customizable. So if I'm satisfied with all of my mappings, I can go ahead and hit OK. And here you see my PNL import template that I just made. And I'll hit OK to exit this window. So now I've got this PNL import, and now I just need to add it here to the sequence item. So it's already in my library. That's what I just did, um, creating that template. So I only need to hit Add. And here is my PNL import template. It's an ASCII type. And I can hit OK. And there it is. And again, if I ever need to edit this import template, I, I can do that by clicking here. And this brings up the template. So there's my modified uh, name for the, the G and F columns. So um, I'm actually done now, so I can go ahead and exit this window. Now if I wanted to import my uh, PNL file as a test, I only need to come up to here under Run Sequence. You see here are all the different sequences. So I'll select my PNL import. And here it goes to the folder that I told it to for the default folder. I'll click that R70 PNL, hit Open. And here you see that it's imported into parts. So if you want to do a different import, you can. So here I've got a, a cut import. So you could set up a new uh, import template for .cut files. Or you could do a CSV import, and it'll just import into BlueCell. So it's pretty easy. You can really import anything you want that um, uses uh, text fields and is delimited. Now to go back to conditions, now that we've created the import template. So for this PNL import, um, say you wanted to create a condition where you only wanted to import uh, parts of a certain material, um, you can do that here under this condition. So one example is, um, say you wanted to import uh, material that only starts with uh, this three quarter. Um, and S. If you can see here, this is three-quarter shot plywood. So I only want to import uh, the three anything um, any part that starts with three-quarter uh, space shop, and it won't and not import the three-quarter mel. So we can do that by coming back to this import template, and you know you can create a a new sequence as well. You know si with similar import template but with a condition instead if you don't want that to apply for all your PML imports. So under condition uh, it does use Python uh, functions. So here under material the material is now been assigned this H value. So we could say H dot starts with and then parentheses, and you want to put in quotes, three-quarter shop. And we can say OK. And then exit this. So to re I'll remove this. We run that sequence with the new uh, filtering. We'll pick the file. You see here, it only brought in the three-quarter shop pot um, material. And you can combine functions as well. So if we go back to this, so say we want to add another parameter for the condition filtering, we could say and, and then whatever variable you want. So say, for instance, length, which is E, 
and we say only parts that have a length of 25. And that also needs to be in quotes. So all of these are actually 25.5, so we'll actually get no parts. So let's test this. And you see here, nothing came through. So that just shows that it, it did work, that filter, and you don't have any parts that are, uh, that start with three quarter shop and are a dimension of, or a length of 25. So the filtering and the conditions are quite powerful if you need to do like a modified import so you don't have to uh, modify the file before importing into the blue cell. Um, it'll save you time and um, it's generally pretty convenient. So that basically concludes our demo for the ASCII import function of BlueCell. Uh, if you have any questions about BlueCell or uh, if you have any support related questions, you can contact us at either sales at yoursoftink.com or support at yoursoftink.com. You can also visit us at our website at www.yoursoftink.com. Thanks.